I'm Justin Colmack. I'm the CTO at Docker. I'm the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee and maintainer of Notary. Yep. And um, I'm David I, Tessar. Yeah. He wasn't on the bill, but we uh, we always like to do our presentations jointly, and uh, usually I've done them with Steve Lasker. But it's good to have someone else for a change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great to be here. Um, I'm a principal product manager at Microsoft, and I work a lot with um, Notary, Oraz, Ratify, managing those projects. So, yeah. Right. Um, so. Really, just getting started. Really, with um, you know, what, how did Notary get to where it is today? Um, you know, we, we Notary's always been a product, a project that's been based around kind of firm foundations and standards. Um, Notary originally joined uh, CNCF back in 2017 alongside um, the Tough standard, which it was based on. So Justin's over there um, who led that. Um, and um, originally it was a project at Docker, kind of, which is where my, my original connection to it comes from, but it, um, you know, it's been a CNCF project for a very long time now. Late in 2019, um, there was a bunch of issues. Um, we weren't seeing a lot of adoption um, like, um, of Notary back then. There were um, kind of architectural issues in particular. It was a sidecar that sat on the side of a registry. That meant, first of all, that uh, um, many registries didn't have support for Notary at all because uh, someone had to be run on the side. It wasn't a native part of the registry protocol. Um, and it was kind of, um, uh, there were other related problems with that. There's a talk I did back in 2019 um, in, uh, uh, where are they? Uh, San Diego, yeah, um, where I talked about a lot of the issues that we had um, and the kind of problems. And, we, and that really kind of started off um, uh, a, a, a whole set of streams of work um, to try and um, resolve some of these issues and you know find new foundations and standards to build on. Um, one of the things I think is kind of useful to talk about is um, identity when we're talking about signing. Um, what kind of identity, what's the identity of the thing that we're actually kind of interested in. Um, with uh, these are kind of these are my terms for these things. I don't think there's actually a very standard terminology for a lot of these things. Um, we built um, Notary originally on Tuff, and Tuff has a kind of basically a root key which roughly corresponds to a repository or project. I mean, I, the, 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 you can have larger, root, you know, kind of larger scope root keys than that, but um, kind of um, it, which is a really great model, but we did find it hard for people to adopt because they're not actually used to that kind of model and didn't have very many tools for it, which I think is kind of a problem, uh, one, of the, one of the issues we had. Um, one of the things that we um, have been working around in particular, and we're going to talk about more today, is like organization identity as a, as a very kind of, very coarse-grained, but kind of, um, easy to use identity because organizations already have identities through um, PKI, through you know, HTTPS and that infrastructure. Um, there's a whole thread around service identity with projects like Spiffy that um, give out identities to services and um, work on OIDC with, for example, GitHub Actions for um, you know, kind of organizing identity through services, which is um, kind of interesting and promising. And then the, the thing that people kind of assume is the kind of right path sometimes is, is identity of individuals. Um, there are lots of problems around that because most individuals don't have keys or key management and it's difficult to work out the association back from an individuals to the actual artifacts you're signing which are actually rooted in, for example, projects which is where, where, where the tough model comes from. So I think it's useful to think about what kind of identities um, we're going to use when we're signing and um, yeah, we're, so we're, we've got this focus particularly on um, PKI. I mean, if you look at X509, it was originally designed as a kind of um, framework for hierarchy of keys for everything and everyone, including individuals, but it never worked. And um, we're kind of left with the organizational identity bits, the sort of S and HTTPS piece as the sort of dominant um, kind of working, working kind of um, key management infrastructure that's kind of around. Um, a, a bunch of principles we had around uh, key management in general. Um, one thing is we, we um, all the people we talked to, the, all the 
potential customers around this were all very insistent that they wanted um, hardware managed keys. Um, again, Leisure V1 would largely managed um, uh, software keys, although there was um, lots of lots of the root keys were, um, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of work on root keys and Yubi keys and things like that. But the general usage, most of the keys were in software. Um, most there's now good infrastructure in the, with the cloud providers and elsewhere for actually managing keys, always in hardware without and only doing signing, um, the, uh, you know, without actually exposing the private key and. Um, so we built a plug-in model around that, um, so that we, you know, you can, um, well, we we'll demo um, Azure Key Vault, but you can use any kind of um, hardware key using the kind of plug-in model that we built. I'll show you that in the demo. Oh. Oh. Um, and for signing formats, we have, we eventually, after some many iterations, settled on Cozy. Um, again, on, on Notary V1, we used canonical JSON for signing. Uh, we ran into a bunch of, um, because, largely because the um, kind of whole registry formats were based around JSON and, so, and, um, and Tuff was based around JSON. Um, it seemed a natural thing at the time, but we ran into all sorts of issues like the canonicalization library we used. Uh, well, first of all, there's, there's, there's multiple canonicalization standards for JSON and the library we used turned out to be buggy and not implement any, either of them correctly. Um, so there's all sorts of issues we had. Cozy is a um, IETF standard um, to improve JSON signing. It, it effectively, it's not, it's not JSON, it supports binary um, serialization directly. You don't have to um, you know, wrap everything in, um, in um, you know, wrap binary data at all. Um, and we've been using the Go Cozy library, which um, has we've had two independent security reviews from Trail of Bits and NCC on that, and we're very, you know, kind of happy with this as a as a foundational standard infrastructure for the actual key formats. Um, we spent a lot of time working with, you know, we wanted to put things natively in the registry and that mean, the things we want to put in the registry are signatures, also things like S-bombs and, and uh, other pieces. So the ORAS project has kind of been around since 2018 about like, let's put more stuff in registries. It's not just container images. Um, what's really happened now is that we've managed to, you know, is, is, um, you know as we've got real use cases coming from um, signing and so on, we've actually managed to get this converged into an officially accepted OCI um, 1.1 standard that's coming out soon. So um, this is actually now um, official and not a kind of um, side project, which is really great. Um, and it's seeing wider implementation. Um, for a long time, people complained that Docker Hub did not have support, and I'm happy to announce sneak uh, preview announcement. We're launching this on Monday, um, so there will be full support. Um, for artifacts on Docker Hub, um, and I think you know this is you know now a kind of um, becoming a mature standard and, and officially upstream in OCI, which is great. Um, reference types were the other part of this work that we ended up doing. We had a lot of requests that people wanted to add signatures to things um, rather without actually modifying the object. Um, and they wanted to basically you know, be able to add signatures, add S-bombs, add basically references without modifying underlying objects because that's the kind of workflows that people had. So um, we spent a lot of time working on this, you know, again, um, outside the Notary project because it's a general OCI thing. And um, this is also finally being standardized in OCI 1.1 as well. Um, and again, um, we're, 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 we, um, at the moment, um, there's support on Azure, OCR. We will be working on support on Docker Hub. Um, that's just as soon as we've shipped to Artifacts, we'll be work, starting work on that. So again, as it's now kind of officially part of the OCI spec, we're expecting to see much more um, use of it. I think um, Amazon has support as well. Um, yeah, still things front row. So yeah, Amazon's um, like announced some things that they have interested in doing using it as well. So it's a, it's a general mechanism for doing more stuff, which is kind of really interesting. So um, 
That's, yeah. that's, there's some demos. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, just to reiterate um, what Justin was, has been talking about here is that uh, the Notary Project has really taken the approach uh, to build carefully upon a number of security standards, right? And, and Notation is the, the V2 tool uh, that I'm gonna show you. But that is one tool of, as you'll see, different tools um, here that help with the overall secure supply chain security. So uh, to start off, uh, I am going to show you how easy it is to do re use remote signing. And so first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a key in Azure Key Vault. This key, uh, you know, for your organization, you might have it already assigned to you and have access. So I'm gonna first, you know, create this, this key. It'll take a second here. It's actually pulling up to the, the Azure Key Vault to create the private key. And uh, then uh, we now have this key ID assigned. So this key uh, that we created is, um, uses a code signing certificate, which is what this EKU is. But you could imagine in an organization, uh, you would have probably a sub CA or root CA uh, to, you know, so if something were to happen, you could, you could revoke only the, the minimal amount of damage. So with that, uh, we created the key. Now let's add that key to uh, to be able to be utilized by notation. Okay, so that, that told us that that's the key uh, that's used for default, so we can show that key by notation key ls. And you'll see that um, our key is being stored in key vault and we're gonna utilize that to do some signing. Uh, but first, uh, you know, it's important to call out that um, you know, right now the, the local Docker instance doesn't have the OCI uh, 1.1 support for artifacts and referral types, that will eventually change. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this uh, container registry locally so that we can push to it. So if we do a Docker PS, we can see that this is being served up locally on port 5000. We'll then build that container image and push it to that local uh, registry. Uh, and so now if I were to take a look, uh, ORAS is a tool that allows you to discover those artifacts that have the OCI enabled registry. So when I, when I check a look at this right now, there's no artifacts attached to that, to that image that I just created. However, what I can do is I can use my uh, key that's up in Key Vault to sign the local image using notation. When I sign this, it's gonna come back with a, with a SHA. It's, it's, it's the, the private key is stored remotely, and so I have no access to it there, and I've now included I've now signed that local image. And so when I do that same step again, I can see here that the local image has a signature attached that has a, a SHA, a unique SHA. So that enables me to do a verification. When I try to verify, you're gonna see that this does not work. Well, why? Why is that? Uh, and that's because we haven't decided, by default, we don't trust any any kind of certificates. So we have to explicitly add that to our configuration. So if I do a notation cert ls, that says which certs in my store am I trusting? And right now there's none. So that makes sense why I don't trust. I signed it, but I don't trust it yet. I could pull down that key that I used, the public key that I used to just sign that. But what I think is a little more interesting is public content, right? So, you know, I can verify my local image, but what if I had an image that's just, I don't, I don't know, it could be on Docker Hub, could be somebody else's registry. How do I know if that thing is what it was supposed to be when it was created? And so for that, we have this external image, this Wabbit Networks Azure ACR GitHub Net Monitor uh, uh, image that, is, that, I, that I don't necessarily trust yet. So when I list that though, it's got a whole bunch of different artifacts attached to it. 
Um, as you can see here, it's got a, uh, a vulnerability scan. It has an attached SBOM and the image itself. And all three, of, all three of those things are signed. So how do I know if I can trust this or not? Well, uh, with notation, what I would need to do is uh, just get the public certificate. Now, we are looking into ways of how we might be able to you know, make this a better experience than you know, curling a, a cert from, from GitHub. But for now, this, this does work. Um, it is indeed public. So if I add this public cert uh, to my notation trust store, and I do a notation uh, cert ls, you can see that I now trust that cert. So um, what I can do now is I can verify that image that I had up online, or that's, that's up there. So before I decide I want to use it locally or in any other place, uh, or pull it down, I can verify. And so that did verify, right? So now I know that I, I have some level of assurance that whoever signed that content, um, if I trust the identity of this, this public key, right, I, I, can, I can have some insurance that that image has not been modified. The other nice thing that you can do is, you know, we noticed there were some artifacts attached to it. So uh, one of the things uh, I might do is, you know, first verify, let's say, the SBOM, because maybe, you, maybe somebody hacked in and they, they modified the, the software bill of materials to say there wasn't vulnerabilities or something in it. Um, I verify that that's there, uh, so that seems to be correct, and I can actually pull that software bill of materials down from the, from the actual public image. And when I look at that, I now have um, the SBOM there. Right, pulled from the, the, the public registry and for me to inspect. I obviously could run different tools on it to see if there's vulnerabilities or other things before I decide I, I may or may not want to trust that. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna switch back to the slide deck and we'll go from there. Yep. Okay, so this, <laughs> is a real scenario here that does happen. Uh, what if you have an identity stolen, right? Somebody hacks your credentials, or it may even be that somebody creates what seems to be a real account, but it's fake, and they get a certificate. It could be a short-lived certificate, could be ephemeral, could be keyless, whatever you want to call it, but some way they've obtained an identity that allows them to va validly, validly quote unquote, or get or use a certificate. At that point, that person, what they could do is they could start to sign content um, and push that up, right? Well, there have been some attacks in this space, right? I know. S silo wins? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's a number of them out there. Um, so what do you do in this case, right? Well, <laughs> this, is, this is where uh, the, the trust store and trust policy comes into play with notation. So with notation, uh, we have the concept of trust store. Um, I would say it's the easiest way to think about it. It's a fancy way to think of it. It's a, it's a location, a file system of where all the certificates, just like the one I had, the public certificates that you trust. Uh, but the real power comes in to, with trust policy. Uh, trust policy, we just give you a, a, a little teeny snippet of an idea of what you could do here. But really, what you could do is revoke uh, let's say that, that compromised identity, right? You know where, let's say, the CA or sub-CA it's coming from. You, could, you can revoke that. Anything that's signed with that, um, that identity, you're, you're going to block from, from trusting inside your organization. Uh, you can also go even fine-grained down to individual artifacts, right? You may not want to tr you know, leave your old content that's signed validly there, but you just want to say maybe certain things out there that you want to not trust and so there's a lot of power in this and customization to be able to, uh, to handle these kind of situations that may come up. And, and furthermore, uh, it, at least in the specification right now, we do support OSCP and CRL lists. So if you, if you want to go to that level of extent, you, you can go there to, to query for revocation lists. I, another point that is really also important to point out is that you know, there's, there's criticisms out there uh, on, on you know, this, this revocation thing doesn't scale. Well, I would, I would argue that, that that definitely applies for the, the HTTPS, right? The, the World Wide Web, where there's just an insane amount of sites that you have no idea like, like what they are and there's, there's just overwhelming, right? But when it comes to an organizational enterprise, right, you should have a much smaller list of 
entities that you are deciding that you want to trust. Even for content that you decide to pull in from outside sources, you're likely going to re-sign that with your own certificate. And therefore, you have a much smaller radius, and it becomes much more manageable. The next, the next thing, though, is, OK, well, so great. If I trust it or not, how do I actually enforce this stuff that I trust, right? Like, I got the, the thumbs up or, or down on the thing, but how do I make sure this actually happens, right? And there's two places, there's two really, I would say, key places that you need to think about enforcing this, and that is likely in your build pipeline. So before you go and deploy, let's say, a container image, uh, you want to verify that since it was created, nothing has changed and it's, and it's reliable, right? So at that point, you might want to verify uh, the image uh, to make sure that it does not, you know, cause any extra cycles on the, on, the, on the cluster. Once it goes to the cluster, you can yet validate again and then have that enforce that standard so that you know, those policies that you decide you want to apply on the cluster enforce that you only are going to run signed content. The tool that we use uh, in this particular case that I'm going to show you is, with a demo is, is a tool, an open source tool called Ratify. And Ratify enables you to, uh, to do that enforcement as a binary, which you could put into a pipeline or run offline, technically, if you, if you wanted. And as an admission controller working with Gatekeeper, is, is an actual external data provider for Gatekeeper. And then it runs uh, there working with Gatekeeper to, to enforce only those policies that you desire. The first thing I'm going to do is show you uh, this in a pipeline. So uh, I have a pipeline here that does quite a few different steps. And I'm going to first edit this pipeline just to give you uh, to kick off a build so you kind of have an idea of what, it's, uh, what everything is doing. And, and we'll walk through it. So the first thing I do in here uh, is I'm going to just say, uh, hello, KubeCon. <laughs> this is my build image text that I have for, for the image up here for NetMonitor. And we're going to commit that directly to the branch. OK. So that's kicking off a, while well, that's kicking off a, a build, I'm going to explain a little bit about what this is doing. First, it's, it's pointing out that GitHub has a ability to host the registry as a service for, for within the builds it, itself. And once uh, Docker natively supports this, you'll no longer have to run this at the start. Next, uh, that's important to call out. You know, we install ORAS. Uh, we build the Docker image. And the other thing that is, is nice uh, in terms of making it convenient, there is a, a notation setup task that enables you to use that secret that you, let's say, your organization uses, for instance, to sign things. In this way, that you could secure your build, and ideally, as a user, you would never even really need to, you know, personally, you know, have access to the certificate. You would just probably have your build system have your certificate, uh, at least a different certificate, perhaps than a personally used one, to test things, uh, so that it's more secure and trustworthy. And then after this, you know, we're going to, after building the image, we're going to sign the image, we're going to generate an S bomb, we're going to attach. Use the ORAS uh, attach to attach the S bomb, and then we're going to sign uh, that that S bomb and all of the artifacts that are there. So, I think we, we can take a look now. Yeah, so ORAS ORAS attach is is the um, yeah. reference type command. It's a new new command in ORAS to support reference types. Yeah. So we can see here. I think we're actually almost done. Yeah. It's almost already built and. Uh, one of these, the last thing that is important to call out is that you, you want to do this as a local, uh, on the local host until the very end. Because what you may want to do is during that process of doing the build, you may want to check for, you know, if it has vulnerabilities, I may want to stop the build process. Because you don't want to necessarily pollute your registry with tons of extra stuff that doesn't really qualify for production. Um, and at the end, we can use this ORAS copy to just go from the local build host up to the actual location in, in the registry. So what I can do now is I can take a look and see what I just built uh, with you here. And so if we take a look at this, I'll clear this out. 
We did ORAS discover for the image we just built. And again, you could see all of this that we just did there, it was about a minute to do all this, to create the S-bomb, create the vulnerability scan, sign the image, sign the S-bomb, all those things are done in a very fast manner. And now how do we enforce it? We can enforce it, uh, we have Ratify uh, as a binary, and one of the things that Ratify has is a local configuration, so it allows you to show what certificates that, that you are using. So in this case, uh, Ratify has this config. It's saying um, there are a number of different verifiers that like you could verify S-bombs, you can verify license checkers. You know, it is open source, so you could add other plugins for policy. But right here, we're just using the notary signature verification, and we're using just this particular trusted certificate. And so with that, we can do a, rat a ratify verify locally um, and, and actually see that these different images will, will verify um, from a binary. So you could imagine here, again, you could put this on an offline scenario or in a, in a pipeline uh, to verify before you deploy. And then within Kubernetes, we have, uh, we have uh, Ratify running on this Kubernetes cluster. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how that same experience uh, looks in a, uh, in a cluster. So I'm gonna run the logs here, uh, kubectl logs on one window and then on the other window, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to run a, a non-trusted image. And this should fail. So yep, there you see the gatekeeper admission controller said, nope, you failed this, it's, it's, not assigned. it's not assigned container we trust. And then here, uh, the sign one runs, and just so you could see that it actually did something, we can go back to the logs and we could see that this net monitor signed actually did verify um, from Ratify on the, on the actual cluster itself. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll head back. So um, this is the kind of stage of where we are today. So this is the, that's the versions of pretty much everything that we demoed. Um, so they're kind of, um, you know, kind of in, a, in various alpha and beta states. Um, this is um, kind of the roadmap for going forward. So um, there's going to be the first beta notary release. Um, obviously, um, OCI one point. 1.1 is, uh, you know, being finalized coming out soon, and um, um, we're also, um, um, you know, all, all, all the other things are kind of on on their way to kind of final final releases over the next few months. Um, I also want to talk about um, Skit, which is um, a, a standard that a lot of the people who work on this are really interested in. It's a draft IETF standard for um, supply chain security. Um, in particular, it's got a, it supports um, a set of distributed transparency logs, which um, still support revocation and they also support um, uh, DID um, identities, uh, um, you know, as part, of, as part of the log. So you can, um, and, and so there's a, there's a um, and there's a whole set of verification infrastructure. It's, it's, it's a very early stages, but um, a, a, there's, a, there's an amount of interest in this, and um, there's a blog post there that Steve Lasker wrote, and um, I think we'll be doing a presentation to the Notary Working Group about um, why, you know, why this is interesting and what kind of things that people are thinking about integrating back into Notary as this is developed in the IT, IETF. There's also a whole bunch more work that we, uh, that's ongoing that we ha kind of haven't had time to cover. So there's a lot, you know, to do in terms of, um, in particular, the problem I was talking about before, like how, you, how do we roll out signing infrastructure from a world where things are not signed to where they are signed um, and how we actually get that done. We're, we're, we're doing some planning work around, you know, getting Docker official images and the signing support for those and how we're going to get them, you know, validation of signatures, you know, throughout the ecosystem. And there's a, there's a bunch more work to, you know, to talk about in, in that kind of area as well. Um, thanks. There's, there's what's to... next. I don't think we covered the what's next, right? Sorry? Did we, did we cover what's next or? I did. Oh yeah, I did. briefly, yeah, yeah. very briefly, yeah. okay. Sorry. Um, so yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're also out of time, I think, uh, or almost out of time. I think we've got like one minute, so we could probably, um, okay.
We've got five minutes. Oh, we have got some questions then. Okay, we've got some questions. I thought we were. Okay, five minutes. All right. So, you, yep, there's a question from in the front. Justin. So, if you want to sure. have, a, have a mic, ideally. I have a mic for the, for the recording and the online people. Probably a good idea, even though I know you can project your voice. <laughs> All right, great, thank you. Um, it's a very interesting talk, and I, I have like a whole bunch of questions, so I'm, I'm kind of struggling with, with what to ask here. Um, I guess one of the, the biggest questions I have is, uh, there's been a lot of work with the SIG store community that builds on standards and has had a lot more security review and things like that that sort of subsumes everything that this proposes to do. So why, why not collaborate with that effort? Uh, I think that, I, mean, I think that there there is a there is a whole bunch of collaboration. I mean I think you know a lot of the thing the building blocks are for, are common or becoming common, like things like you know reference types and so on were all done together. So I think that yeah um, yeah I think that um, I think we, we there's definitely a kind of convergence in, the, in, in a lot of those areas. There's, yeah, well, but, yeah like, so, so for instance, uh, SCIT would be one that's an IETF standard. Um, would love to see participation there as well. That's, a, you know, international standard. And then OCI, you know, is something we called out earlier that was, uh, you know, Josh from Shangard and Sajay worked on together. So in general, oh, I, did, I did miss that bit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I did miss the bit about saying. Yeah, so if so there's on, so on there's a, types, so there's a session. To, to go to yeah, so, so there's a session there. Um, but yeah, I'd say uh, offline, um, we'd be happy to talk to you more because I'd love to know what standards um, we're, we're actually not su supporting or doing right now. I would I would actually kind of think about almost the opposite sure. way. Yeah. So so you support like salsa signing and attestations and Absolutely, you're, you're yeah, also yeah. doing like uh, so how how do you verify uh, that the data that you have in your S bombs is correct, because there's there's like a whole effort that groups are doing to make sure that the supply chain they generate is actually accurate, and not just like signed. Because yeah. signing so, signing is right. Not signing accuracy. signing is only part of the the whole picture, right? And so that's where um, you know we we talked on it briefly, but but SCIT is the industry standard that we're trying to work for all the different supply chain artifacts end to end. And so I think because otherwise, if, if, no, if everyone in this whole space just does whatever they want, then we all have different tooling experiences, right? But, and so, but, yeah. but there's, there's already a, a you know, fairly standardized thing you know, underneath a lot of SIG store and salsa and stuff like this, the in Toto, which. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. yeah we're aware, yeah. I'm aware of salsa we're, 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 in Toto. We're, yep, uh, well aware right. of those. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're absolutely yeah. using in Toto for the work we're doing in that area. And we're okay. uh, at Docker, and we're, 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 you know, we're working you know, with testify second people on, on supporting that for the S bombs that we're generating mm -hmm. for Docker official images. That's Great. We're, we're absolutely going to, using absolutely those things for. And, for and you're that. generating in Toto layouts and verifying them, right? As as part of that, also or not? I mean, it's it's, it's work in progress. We haven't shipped okay. it yet, so we're still we're still. But that's but the aim is the absolutely the aim is for us to um, use in Toto for the validation of the stuff that we're shipping as as Docker, um, and that's not you know that's not part of the Notary project. That's you know we're we're, we're just using we're, we're, we're working with everyone else on on that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. There's another, I don't know if you're, uh, we haven't covered it in here, but in terms of uh, trying to help with things, we, we also, uh, at Microsoft, we announced like a open source software security framework um, and has a maturity model and other things. And we have that like now being a part of the working group in, in CNCF. So there's a lot of things that are, we're involved in standards. And as a whole, I'd say that's, that was part of, part of what we've been talking about is that's what we're trying to do is build on, build on standards and throughout the whole time, which is why sometimes, you know, things come together with different, different tooling and take a little longer. Um, the repo that you're using, the workflows and the tooling there, is that all stuff that's publicly available that we can try out? Yeah, all that, all that stuff right now, uh, it's all shipped. Everything I demoed is, is available, ready to use how, how I demoed it today. Yep. Right, cool. All right. Anyone else? No. Nope. Thank, thank you. Oh. One, one, one more. more? I guess. 
I'm actually curious. Uh, the admission control functionality, it called out to an external tool. Would you happen to know how that worked? How, how Gatekeeper was able to call out to an external tool to verify the signature? Or is that like an inbuilt feature? So which part? The, oh, the one that was on Kubernetes? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. It, the, the Ratify ad, admission controller functionality, the, the thing that attaches to Kubernetes, uh, it runs in a pod that's there. That pod actually has mounted the public certificates that, uh, that, it, that you trust, right? And Ratify will actually locally try and go and, and you know, verify that signature on the cluster inside the pod, which is what I showed you in the logs. So it's using the, it, it actually uses the notation Go library. And so it's, it's using that Go library in the Ratify binary to, to check Gotcha. The, the signatures, the notation signatures, yep. Okay, that sounds good. So uh, it's a separate admission controller from Gatekeeper, right? So no, it utilizes Gatekeeper. So it's actually, let me, yeah, it's an actual external data provider for Gatekeeper. So they work together. Gotcha. So if yeah. you have Gatekeeper, right, you'd need the workload running to verify the signatures, but it would be like a data feed for Gatekeeper to make its decision. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you could do, if you wanted, you can do it with uh, Rego. So you could do, you know, just Rego policy um, that works with the external data served up to, to uh, by Ratify to, to Gatekeeper. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> We're kind of out of time. I think time. Sorry. How much time? Sorry. What? I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you.